So how to use the parametric EQ to dial out the mud in your guitar sound. So while this video is basically about the parametric EQ, I also use the green overdrive pedal to help dial out some of the mud and some of the low end boom. So we'll turn off the distortion and the parametric EQ and we'll just hear how the amp sounds. It's a little compression, a little reverb. While that may be okay, it certainly isn't great. It's very boomy, very muddy. And just by turning on the green distortion, we really tighten up that low end and we actually dial out a little bit of the mud. We're leaving the parametric EQ off. So listen to this sample and hear how much tighter the bass response is and how clear and more articulate the guitar sounds. <laughs> So that's much, much better. So now we'll move on to the parametric EQ. One thing I should mention, if you're listening through laptop speakers or, or low-end computer speakers, you're not going to hear much of a difference, and you may actually end up preferring the muddy version, just because of the way lower-end speakers reproduce sound. If you're listening through uh, mid-range and up headphones or mid-range and up studio monitors, you should be able to hear what I'm talking about. So now I will explain a little bit about the parametric EQ. And to do so, I'll open up the EQ3 4 band plugin that comes with Pro Tools. So if you have the 11 rack, then you have Pro Tools. If you have Pro Tools, you have this plugin. All right, so first off, where is the mud range? Well, that depends on who you ask. Some people say it's between 200, 500, maybe 200 and 400. The place I usually look is 160 to 320. In this rig, I found the mud range that I wanted to remove to be around 279 hertz. I dialed out 5.8 decibels and a relatively soft Q or wide Q, only 1.3. Now, in order to explain these settings, I've opened up the EQ3 4-band plugin. So if we look here, I have this set to about 1.8, so we'll open it up a little bit to 1.3. Frequency range is 249, which will take that up to about 279, which will match our 11 rig. And we have about 5.6 decibels pulled out. So this is a visual representation of what's going on in our 11 rack. You can see that with the settings we've chosen for our 11 rack, we're affecting a relatively broad range of frequencies. You can see that we start dropping decibels around 120, 123, and they really start to drop off around 190 or so. Same goes for the higher end of our queue. You can see we're dropping out frequencies around 460, and they really start dropping out around 350 or so, until we get to our center range of 279. So it's very important to know what your cue is. That's your bandwidth. How many frequencies are we affecting? If I were to tighten up the cue, in other words, go closer to 10, you see how it really tightens up. If I move the frequency range, you can see where my center range is. Right now my gain's on a negative number because we're pulling out a mud range, but the opposite holds true. If you start adding gain, you can see we have a narrow Q, and we've boosted a narrow range of frequencies with a center frequency around 281. We loosen up the Q, we start boosting many more frequencies. So that's how the parametric EQ works, which you need to know. So we'll put this back to around the settings we have on our 11 rack. So you can see in this rig I filtered out a, a bit of the lower end, the boominess, using the high pass 6 filter there. But this video is really focusing on the mud range. So again, I usually look between 160 and 320. It may vary a bit. I may go up to 400 or in some rigs and so forth. But look between 160 and 320. Vary the width of your cue. Vary the amount of reduction and gain. And just search around until it sounds right. Of course, all these things are dependent upon what kind of guitar pickups you're using, what cabinet you choose, what microphone you choose for your rig, what other things are in the signal chain, and so forth. So we'll turn on our parametric EQ, and then we'll hear what this rig sounds like with the mud dialed out. All right, so I think it sounds pretty good. So now let's hear what this rig sounds like when we change the gain to zero. So now the mud range is in full effect. We're not boosting, we're not cutting. Let's just see how it sounds. The rest of the settings will stay the same. The green distortion stays on. So let's hear how it sounds with the mud range in. So that to me sounds a little bit narrower and much muddier. It's too thick sounding in the lower end. It's really taking over the sparkle and the shine of the high end and the articulation. Now you may have heard that and said, oh, actually that sounds better. 
Well, that can be a trick of the brain. Because we have eliminated the cut of the gain, the level, of course, has increased. So don't mistake louder for better. So now if we go back and we put in our minus 5.8, and then we listen to a sample again, since we have heard what it sounds like with the mud range in, now when we listen to it with the mud range out, you'll really be able to tell how much clearer and detailed the rig sounds. <laughs> All right, so that sounds much better to me. And it's very important to dial out some of the mud and the low end, especially when you start recording, layering guitars. Once you put your bass in there and your drums and get all these low end instruments competing, you really have to carve out a space for each instrument so they all stand out on their own. So let's check out one more rig here. So you can see that in this rig, I felt the mud range centered around 241. My cue is a bit tighter, 1.7, and my gain is reduced by 6.8. So we're still affecting a broader range of frequencies. So you can see with a 1.7 Q. So we're probably affecting closer down to one, the 160 area all the way up to maybe the 300 range. And we're slowly reducing decibels until we get down to the center range where it would be minus 6.8. You can see again in this rig I have the green distortion on. Tone is down, overdrive is down, just a little bit of level. Really help tighten it up. I again have filtered out some of the very low end around 79 hertz. Added in a little tiny boost at 1.6 and a, and a little shelf at 2.1. So let's hear a sample of this rig if we add the mud range back in and just hear how that sounds. Okay, so that's not horrible, but it's not near as good as it could be. Way too boomy, hard to really make up the top end. It's not as clear and cutting as you want your guitar sound to be. So we'll put in our minus 6.8 in this case. Now let's hear a sample of what it sounds like with the mud range dialed out. Alright, so that's much, much better in my opinion. So now you know a couple tricks to dial out the mud using the parametric EQ in the 11 rack and also employing the green distortion in the 11 rack, which really helps out. Again, to dial out the mud range, look for frequencies between 160 and 320 hertz.